you can download this book for free. I just wanted to put that message up front and get it out of the way, in case you want to skip the video and just read the book. You can download it right now from LeanPub for free with no catches. The link is in the description if you're not watching this on the book's landing page. By the way, this video isn't here to teach you everything that can be known about how to use D3. No video is going to do that. You're only going to understand D3 by using D3. This book will help you get started and then guide you through some of the functions that have made it one of the most popular JavaScript libraries of all time. D3 is shorthand for Data Driven Documents. D3.js is a JavaScript library for manipulating documents based on data, but that description does not do it justice. D3 is all about helping you take information and making it more accessible to others via a web browser. Being a JavaScript library means that it's a software tool that can be used in conjunction with other software tools to achieve a task. Those other tools are based on web standards, such as HTML, SVG and CSS, but we don't need to know too much about them to start using D3. It's an open framework, which means there are no hidden mysteries about how it works and it allows others to contribute to a constant cycle of improvement. The beauty of D3 is that it allows us to associate data and what appears on the screen in a way that directly links the two. Change the data and we change the object on the screen. A circle, a line, a point on a map, a graph, a bouncing ball, a gradient and way way more. Once the data and the object are linked the possibilities are endless. The book D3 Tips and Tricks will take you on a journey of development. It will enable you to create an environment to start experimenting and then it will guide you through the basics until you feel comfortable and ready to step out on your own. We'll get straight into a simple line graph. We'll start experimenting with adjusting things like line width, color and fill. We'll adjust our margins beyond where they're supposed to be and we'll learn something about our limits. We'll discover how to get data into our graph in different ways and how to get D3 to format time. We'll delve into scaling, ranges and domains and learn how to use them to make our data look pretty and fit our graph dynamically. We'll move our axes about and mess up their formatting. We'll add some labels and learn a thing or two about rotation and coordinates. Then for good measure, we'll add a title to the graph. Since by this time we will be line graph gurus, we'll ease into scatter plots and work out how to smooth lines in different ways. We'll make our line dashed and exceed our limits once again before getting excited about filling in good ways and bad. We'll apply a bit of styling and crank out some grid lines with some help from CSS. Then we'll start thinking about showing more data in different ways and getting it to look right on the page. We'll do a deep dive on object elements, attributes and styles. This will give you a good appreciation of the basic elements that D3 manipulates and will allow you to get a feel for how to implement the changes in code. We will explore bar charts and histograms. There is a subtle but all important difference. Then we'll break down tree diagrams and explore the hierarchy that makes them work as well as applying some styling and making them interactive. We'll build a sand key diagram from different data sources. Bullet charts will get broken down and explained and we'll make them respond to changing data. We'll touch on mapping to represent data on a geographical display as well as figuring out how to move the world about. We'll explore tooltips using transitions and events and format them in a few ways. We can break out all the named colors to expand our color universe. We'll learn how to filter and select data and how to implement a color gradient. Transitions will excite us with their range of motions. Mouse clicking on things on the page will adjust our display. We'll play with HTML inputs to move things about and look at some of the different input options. We'll add some tables, sort their data and style them beyond reason. 
There are even a few larger examples that combine all the techniques that we've learned. We'll break down each one to see just how they tick. By the end of the 400 odd pages, you will have gained a great overview of what is possible with D3 and be ready to develop your own visualization techniques. Enjoy the book and D3JS. Well done on hanging around to the end of the video. If you're wondering why the book is free and what I get out of it, I can tell you that I get a real kick out of thinking that I've helped someone. The way that I measure that is by the number of people who have downloaded the book. So, even if you think the book might not be exactly what you're looking for, download a copy, because you never know what you might pick up.